Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Ruth chapter 3 this lesson, and we will be looking at verse 11 this lesson. But before we begin, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord, Jeremiah 15 verse 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson, Boaz now is talking with Ruth. And it's at night and he wakes up and he sees Ruth. She wants, Ruth, uh, she wants Boaz to cover her feet. But I think Boaz didn't do it. Uh, because he wouldn't make that commitment to her knowing that he wasn't the nearest kinsman. And in verse 10, it says, Blessed be you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as you followed not young men, whether poor or rich. And Ruth determined in her heart that she would obey God and God's word and that she would not go after the young and or whether the, the young, handsome, rich or poor man, she would obey God. And if it meant her marrying uh, Boaz, a man who was probably uh, old enough to be her father, then that's what she would do because that's where the blessing was in obeying God and his word and doing it God's way. And that's where, that's where God uh, pronounces the blessing, all right? So she's determined that she's going to keep God's word. And now she, again, she presents herself to Boaz, but when she comes, she's not sure what Boaz is going to say. Naomi and Ruth are, are living a life as, uh, in poverty. They have to glean for their food. And... She, but they know that through Boaz, they could have a much better life and God could honor Ruth and Naomi through Boaz if he was just willing to do, to redeem them. He's rich enough, but is he willing? And so she presents herself to Boaz in hope, hoping that he will redeem and that he will marry her and that their life would be better. So she, uh, so Boaz says now in verse 11, and now my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that you require for all the city of my people does know that you are a virtuous woman. Now he says here, the first part is he says, fear not. And I'm sure there was a measure of fear in Ruth's heart because if Boaz would reject her, well then where does she go? Where does she go? Uh, is she head? Is she and Naomi headed for a life of poverty the rest of their life, or or will will uh, will Boaz do the kinsman redeemer's part? So he says, "Fear not," and you know, do not fear. Do not fear whether Jesus wants to marry you or not. Do not fear that your creator will reject you when you humble yourself and come to him. You must come to him as you are, a sinner clothed with filthy garments, just like, Zach just like, just like Joshua, the high priest in Zechariah 3, verses one through four. I could speak a whole message on that. That's a beautiful portion of scripture. But Zechariah 3, verses 1 through 4, you come to God as you are, a sinner clothed in filthy garments. And he already knows your filthiness. And he still came and died for your sins. Fear not. He does love you. And I think at times, sometimes in people's lives, they think, I'm too dirty. I'm too sinful. You don't know what I've done. No, I don't know, but he knows. I, I'm too deep into what I'm in. You're not deeper than God's love. You're not deeper than the grace of God. You're not deeper 
than God's mercy and compassion. The death of Christ, the blood that he shed, goes far deeper than you could ever go. You don't know what I've done. I don't know, but he knows. And he died for that sin. Even if you think it's, even if you think it's something that's too terrible or too, too, uh, too heavy, the blood of Christ is able to, to cleanse us from our sins. So he says here to Naomi, fear not, because there was a measure of fear in her heart, whether Boaz would accept her and, and want to marry her or not. So he says, fear not. And he says, I will do to thee all that you require. Now, these, these three words, most beautiful words, I will do. I will do. Let me say it again. Boaz says what? I will do. All right. The reason why Boaz will do it is because she cannot. And the reason why Jesus Christ came and died for your sins is because why? You could not. You could not. All we can do, all we can do is to come and to present our plea to God for marriage. Jesus, marry me. I, I, I give you my heart. Will you marry me? And the rest is up to him. The work and the completion of our marriage is in his hands. It's not in our hands. The work of our marriage is not in our hands. It's in his hands. And you know, it's still, it is still frustrating for some Christians and non-Christians to think that there, that there is nothing that they can do to help out in attaining salvation. It's hard for them to grasp the out, to grasp that outside of exercising faith in Christ, in, in what Christ has done for us, there is literally nothing else we can do. All we can do is exercise our faith in what Jesus has done for us on the cross, but there's nothing else we can do. And you know, there's many people today, they walk around with this spirit of Cain, the spirit of Cain in their hearts. You know what that spirit is? God, if you were a reporter and you were interviewing Cain after he came back from from being rejected by God, what would Cain say? Cain, what happened? Oh, I was rejected by God. This is terrible. Look at my brother over there. He brought this yucky, bloody animal and God, and God accepted that. I brought, look at this, look at this beautiful basket of fruit and vegetables. Look at that, look at that potato. It's wonderful. Look at that corn. It's beautiful, yellow. And God rejected it. I don't think God understands how much work I put into that corn, right? Look at those, look at those grapes, how juicy they are. And, and, and all the, the beets and the carrots, they're all, they're all, look at this. It's a wonderful basket. I worked hard. God doesn't appreciate me, right? I don't think God understands how hard I worked making this basket. All he did was, was kill the animal and shed the blood. Look at this. This took, this took weeks and weeks and months. And now I bring it and he doesn't, doesn't receive it. It's a work. That's a, that's the spirit of Cain. And you got people walking around today and they're saying, you mean to tell me, pastor, that, that teaching in the Sunday school for 27 years means nothing towards my salvation? No. No, nothing. And you're trying to tell me that I sang in the choir for 32 years and, and that doesn't get me one inch closer to heaven? Nope. Not an inch. Not even, not even a, a millimeter closer to heaven. You know what that is? That's the spirit of Cain. That's the spirit of God. I will work for you. I will do something. I will help you out. Right? That's wrong teaching. They got deceived into wrong teaching, thinking that, that there is something they can do, 
something they can do to earn salvation. The same way, right, in, in Acts chapter 16, Paul and the Philippian jailer, what did the Philippian jailer say? What must I do to be saved? That's the mentality of multitudes, vast majority of people in this world. What must I do to be saved? And this is how people think. What, what, did, God, tell me what I have to do to be saved. Give me something. Do you want me to walk on my knees uh, from here to California? I'll do it. You want me to help an old lady across the street? I'll do it. Right? Do you want me to uh, give money to the poor? I'll do it, God. Just tell me what I have to do to be saved and I'll do it. Right? And this is how people think. What must I do to be saved? You know what Paul's answer was? Paul's answer was 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 something far beyond what people can, can understand. Paul said, believe, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What? It's not a work, it's believing. But actually, if you think about it, believing is the harder work. It's easy to walk on your knees from here to California. It's, you may say, I don't understand why. Because once you do it, it's over. You've earned salvation. Now you can go and live your life however you want. And you can always go back and say, God, you saw that. Remember, it's in your heavenly recording. I walked on my knees from here to California. I earned my salvation. Now I'm living life the way I want to live. Right? I gave money to the poor. You saw it, God, on your, on your heavenly uh, recorder in heaven. Put it up on the big screen, God. You'll see me giving money. I earned my way to heaven. There's no heart involved in it. You, you don't see when you, when you do something for God, your heart doesn't have to be in it. But to believe, in order to believe, it takes your whole being to believe. The harder work, the harder work is to believe. Why? Because it takes all of you to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes a total commitment. It's easy to do something for God. It's much harder to believe. You go to people and they say, what must I do to be saved? You give them something to do and they'll like that better. They'll, they'll like that better than, than telling them, oh, you must give your heart to Christ. If you say, give a, give a thousand dollars to the church and, you'll, and you'll, get, you'll get a free ticket to heaven, they'll love that. But you say, look, no, 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 there's nothing you can do. Give your heart to Christ and live for him. Then they go. They're, they're, they don't want that. Why? Because believing is the harder work. Because it takes a full commitment of who you are to give your life to him. So here's, here's people today. They have this Cain mentality. I'll work. I'll do something. No, 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 no. Salvation is not I'll work for him. Salvation, salvation is receiving. It's receiving the work that was already done. The work that only he could do. Boaz said, fear not, I will do. And you know what Jesus says to us today? Fear not, fear not, sinner. I have done it. I have done it. Fear not, I've paid for your sins. Fear not, they're all paid for. Just come to me, give me your heart. Give me your life. Fear not. It's all over. The work of salvation is done. Just give me your heart. Come to me. It, the, the work is done. No, no, God. I want to do the work. I want to do something for you. But there's nothing you can do. I've done it already. I've died on the cross. I've shed my blood. Fear not. It's all over. The work is done. Just give me your heart. Come to me and, and, and let me let me let the Holy Spirit come into you and, and, and I can live in you and live through you and touch other people's lives. Uh, Boaz said, fear not, I will do. <clears throat> and this is what Jesus says to us. Fear not, fear not people on earth. I have done the work. Just come to me. <clears throat> God has finished the work of redemption and pave the way for our eternal union with him.
The work of redemption is done. The work of, of salvation is already finished. Jesus Christ finished the work. And now for, for anyone to be saved, salvation is us coming to him and giving him our heart, giving him our, our life. That's the, that's the, the hardest work. That's the, the real work, is, is giving him our heart. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's not doing anything for God. What must I do to be saved? You can't do anything for God. Why? Because it's already been done. And what was done was something that you could not do. It was impossible for you or for me, for anybody to do anything about our salvation except believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. We'll finish verse 11 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.